it's time to build another gaming PC, and this is an $800 rig. We made some concessions, I bought all these components myself, and I think you're going to like what you see performance-wise for the money. There are some corners that have been cut, but again, an $800 budget I think requires some of that. You don't want to future-proof too much, and you don't want to compromise your performance in the now. First and foremost, I picked up a Zalman T7. This was around $55 on Amazon, one of the cheapest mid-towers that I thought looked decent, somewhat modern, had decent airflow. Uh, it's not going to be, I mean, anything luxurious inside, but it is one of the cheaper cases you could look at in this price range. Now, I'll be honest, I don't really remember what else I bought. I think this is an AMD rig. So first off, we've got uh, 16 gigs of G-Skill Rip Jaws memory. Not bad. I think we got, yeah, this is an MP33 SSD. This was a dirt cheap half a terabyte SSD. I think this makes a lot of sense in an $800 and below budget. Let's see, what's our CPU? This is a Ryzen 5 5600. Again, tried and true. Yes, it is only Zen, th we're on Zen 3, right? Yeah, Zen 3. This isn't Zen 4, but again, 800 bucks. I'm not as worried about future proofing. This is still one heck of a CPU for the price we got it at, especially. Also in this box, we got three Arctic P12 PWM fans. These were like 10 bucks a piece. I just wanted extra airflow because our Zalman T7 doesn't come with a ton of fans. Last up in this box was our 6600. This was pretty much just uh, whatever was left in the budget. You know, that's what went to a graphics card. And I, I really did teeter between Nvidia and AMD. I just think that there's so much more value at this point in the new market and the AMD side of things, it'd be a sin in my book not to go with a 6600. Brand new for like 200, maybe 220. Like that's a really good price, I think, compared to what you could be paying for a team green counterpart. Now, that goes without saying, if you're super big on DLSS or maybe you really care about ray tracing, you're gonna try to squeeze it into an $800 budget. I mean, so be it, opt for Nvidia stuff, but uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother. I think most people will be just fine not having that stuff in again, an $800 rig. I think all that remains is the power supply and the motherboard yeah so the power supply took a pretty sizable chunk of our budget and it's unfortunate it's just how it is currently it looks like power supply prices are going up a tad this here is just a 650 watt from evga and i'm pretty sure it cost us like 110 dollars or something pretty crazy and of course our motherboard this was pretty straightforward again just like our last pc build video this is just the cheapest logical motherboard you could pair it with a CPU. B550 Plus, this is gonna work natively, I believe, with our 5600, so we don't have to worry about upgrading our BIOS before sticking the chip in there. So, this is everything, uh, minus the case, it wouldn't fit. We're going to show you how it performs in 3D Mark Time Spy, so you can compare it to the competition, and then we're going to give it away. That's right, another PC build giveaway, one after another, one week after another here, uh, and it's gonna hurt my bank account. We're gonna have uh, very high business expenses this year, but uh, I think it's, um, I think now more than ever, it's important to give back because people are really pulling back on their discretionary spending. Um, I think there's just been a contraction overall in the world economy, and uh, it happens, ebbs and flows, right? This is something that I feel like I should do now because the enthusiasm and the just the, the sheer excitement that people used to have for building PCs has has really kind of it's just not there anymore. And uh, so if we give folks chances to win, if we can do more of this, build more rigs, give them away globally, um, I think that'll keep some of you energized, at least on this channel. So hopefully you'll want to stick around and watch more of these in the future. All right, so let's get to the build first. Are you ready? Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. So. Let's jump straight into the PC build. One of the things I absolutely adore about budget rigs is that they are relatively easy to assemble. They don't involve typically a lot of RGB, so you don't have to deal with extra cables, and they don't usually involve AIOs. Again, more cables, more tubing, typically a more involved install. We're gonna start first with platform assembly. Ah, the sweet smell of a fresh motherboard. We'll just set it right on top of its box here and use it as a makeshift test bench. Get our CPU ready again, Ryzen 5 5600, six cores, 12 threads, and Zen 3 architecture. Gonna pull back on the retention arm here, we'll align the golden triangle on the CPU with the triangle on the socket. The chip will just set down like so, and then we'll lower the arm. This board denotes slots A2 and B2 be populated first by DIMM, so that's gonna be this slot and this slot. Align the notch in each module with the notch in each slot. Then we're going to gently slide these in, then push firmly down on one side till you hear a click, and then do the same 
on the other. We do that for both modules. Here goes the second. There we go. Next up is our MP33 install. This is an M.2, so it doesn't require SATA data or SATA power cables, which is really nice, but it is going to require a standoff, which is in our motherboard's box. And while we're in here, we can go ahead and take out our rear IO shield as well. This M.2 is a 2280 form factor, which means it's 80 millimeters long. So we'll want to put the standoff in this thread right here. There we go. Now we can mind the notch in the socket with the notch on the drive. You can see how they line up there. We're going to slide this in near the top until it clips all the way in. And then we're going to use our small Phillips screw included in the motherboard's box to tighten it down. Lastly, we want to install our CPU cooler. We're going to go with the box cooler here. It's a race stealth. It's low profile. This is 65 watt TDP chip, so I don't see any harm here, especially in a budget rig. We're first going to remove the two brackets surrounding the socket. And you do so by removing these four Phillips screws. And once that's out, all we need to do is align the standoffs from the back plate underneath with the screws that are pre-threaded through this cooler. There is pre-applied thermal paste, so you won't need to worry about buying any extra unless you absolutely see the need to. Then we're just gonna tighten this down. We're gonna cross tighten, I should say, across all four corners. Make sure not to put too much stress on one side before tightening the opposite. Looking good, and now we can connect the CPU fan cable to the header on the board denoted CPU fan. That's gonna be this lighter gray one up here. And here we are, this is our platform. That was super straightforward. We've literally taken care of memory, storage, the CPU, and the motherboard. Uh, we only have two or three things left to do apart from just installing this into our case. Speaking of, let's get that Zalman T7 out here. I'm actually very excited to build in this case because, uh, well, it's a more affordable one and it just makes for more adventure, right? Adventure is a good thing for 55 bucks. Ow, God, I always gotta get the shock out of the way. Um, I think this is gonna be a heck of a value. The fact that it's a mid tower and looks to have decent airflow should mean that all of the major boxes at least are checked. So this little swivel door is pretty cool, but it is acrylic. It is not tempered glass. Uh, I guess we shouldn't be too surprised. The case does come with two 120 millimeter fans, though they aren't PWM. But what I really like is that they've given us circular cutouts here for additional fans to take advantage of that front perforated panel. Let's take care of our rear IO shield first. Don't want to forget this. And now we can slide this board in. I'm going to do this standing up for the sake of the camera angle, but I don't know how smoothly this is going to go. Um, actually, that wasn't too bad. So it's pretty much lined up as is, and then we can just tighten it down. I'm gonna take care of our connections next. I've got front panel and USB connected. HD audio is this string over here. And here is USB 3. I went ahead and kept the rear exhaust fan installed that has the three pin connection, but I was wrong about this front fan. This actually has a Molex connection only, which is just, that's just trashy all around. So we're gonna throw this out and we're gonna populate all three of these front bays with those Arctic fans. Again, I really like the circular cutouts for these fans here. Just unhindered airflow, and then we can also daisy chain these fans together, all three of them into one header on the motherboard. Actually pleasantly surprised by the amount of cable room in here. There's actually an indention on the right side panel as well, typical of some older cases, so that you can stow extra cables behind the motherboard tray. Uh, we're gonna install our power supply next, and then our graphics card, and that's literally it. The hardware side of things is done. We'll install Windows, and then we'll see what it can do in 3D Mark Time Spy. The 650G5 is not my first choice for power supply, only because I've had some issues in the past with, uh, I think it was the G2 or the G3, just some weird fan curves that uh, EVGA was running with those units. Curious to see how this thing does, especially under load. This is a fully modular unit. The Supernova is generally pretty reliable and it didn't cost as much as some of the other options out there. I was a bit hesitant to spend $100 on a power supply, but again, the prices across the board have really gone up. We could have cut more corners with this, but I'm, I'm content with 650 and it's 80 plus gold certified. So it's gonna be quite efficient throughout the power curve. We've got the modular cables we need connected. We're just gonna slide the unit in. If we can get it underneath these cables we've routed already. Ooh, it just barely fits there. Extended power supplies are definitely a no-go in this Almond T7. Wow, that didn't sound very good. It's just, uh, yeah, cutting things a bit close there. Oh, and look, uh, that's a rivet. That completely fell out of something. Thankfully though, the case still seems sturdy. We're gonna tighten the PSU down from the rear. We'll install our FAT24 pin up top here. And you can just barely see up there the eight pin EPS. I had to wiggle it between the motherboard and the tray because there wasn't a dedicated cutout up here for an eight pin EPS. A bit disappointing. Again, though, it's a cheap case. Some corners were cut. And here we are largely with cable management. I've tried to keep the cables out of the ways of these cutouts, which, uh, 
is a bit difficult to do. There aren't tie points everywhere I'd like to see them, but this is certainly far from the worst case I've ever had to deal with cable management wise. So um, looks pretty clean so far. The last thing we've got to do is install the graphics card and of course connect our supplemental PCI power. And then we'll be ready to officially power on. Are you ready? RX 6600 time. I chose this one because it was a bit cheaper, also a bit more compact. There were some larger XFX cards out there, but I wasn't sure if they were gonna fit in our Zalman T7. You can definitely tell this case is older by its crappy uh, PCI slot covers. These are the single use ones. Once you remove them, it's pretty much done for. We're gonna make sure that these line up yet with that uppermost PCI slot on our motherboard. Get these two out of here, and now we can install the card. Easy does it now. Get the card lined up with the slot here, and then give her a little push. There we go, tolerances are a bit tight in this case, but uh, yeah, there we go. Looks pretty good, very minimalistic here. I'm actually a fan of that. In this case, I think it's nice that we don't have anything too ostentatious going on. We can re-tighten this retention bracket, connect supplemental PCIe power, there we go. And here we are, a nice compact mid tower build. I think this looks pretty good considering we didn't really prioritize aesthetics at all. I'm really glad I decided to add the additional Arctic fans. Those look really good up front. I'm gonna make sure all these components get excellent airflow, even though they have relatively low TDPs compared to some of their more expensive counterparts. Uh, overall, the system is going to perform very well. We'll show you that in a second. The first thing we need to do is attempt to power it on, make sure that it posts for one, and then install Windows, which again is a super simple process. Ooh, okay, fans are spinning. Looking good so far. And remember, there's not an operating system on the drive currently, so I expect we'll boot straight into the BIOS. And uh, there we can enable DOCP, make sure that uh, things are running chipper, and then we can get Windows installed. Come on now. There it is. See, that ain't so bad, right? There we go, straight into the BIOS. Temps look good so far. Now we want to install our operating system. And of course, we're gonna go with Windows. It's the most common by far for desktops like these, although you could opt for Linux if you wanted, or if you were feeling super edgy, in some cases, you could also install some version of Mac OS, but uh, it's not my cup of tea. If you see this screen right here, you're off to a good start. Now we're gonna wanna navigate through the menus uh, and make sure that we select our NVMe. In this case, it's the only drive in the system, so it won't be difficult to do that. Uh, select that as our boot device and then Windows will begin installing. It shouldn't take longer than a few minutes with an NVMe like this. Mm, boy, that's what I like to see. Hey, there we go. Windows is up and uh, we've already got Edge trying to shove itself down our throats. As you can see, this rig holds its own quite well in 1440p synthetics. I like using 3 d Mark Time Spy, not only because, well, it's very consistent across the board and also typically reflects well when it comes to outside games, but it also allows us to compare our results with thousands of others who have used the exact same tool. Scoring just over 9,000 puts us just over 50% of all submitted results, meaning that half of all the scores uploaded to this database were lower than ours and about half were higher. I think that's pretty good for an $800 rig. Now, could we have made a few more concessions? I mean, sure, you know, could you move some things around, maybe purchase a used graphics card? That's what I always recommend, especially in budgets around $800 or less. You're, you're really doing yourself a disservice, I think, by not at least entertaining the idea of a used graphics card. There's a lot of really good value on sites like eBay, but there's also more risk. And that's why I decided to keep it new here. Not only because I wanted that peace of mind myself when assembling, but I also wanted that peace of mind for one of you who happens to win this rig. So you've seen us build this, you've seen us install Windows on it, and you've seen how it performs. Now let's talk about how you can win it. Again, it doesn't matter where you live. As long as we can physically ship it to you, we'll handle shipping. Obviously, you're not going to pay a dime for the rig. And that's that. All we really need from you is your email address. Terms will be in the link. This is a link to our own site. We're not using Gleam or any of those other sites that I know you guys just get driven crazy by. I don't blame you. We're not trying to milk everything that we can out of these giveaways. And there will be many more to come. But uh, if you do want to support us, just give us a sub. That'd be, that'd be super helpful. If you want to like the video, comment down below. That engagement is always very helpful as well. Let us know what you think about this rig. I mean, even if you are interested in trying to win it, uh, what do you think about an $800 budget like this one? And how do you think we did parts-wise? Again, I bought these things out of pocket. I wasn't incentivized by any company to buy the things that I bought. Um, so this is just what I could find just you know shopping around on Amazon. And I think we did decent. Obviously, the graphics card is going to be that one area where it's just very difficult to really save anywhere. 
Um, and of course, we're not looking at used stuff. That's kind of beside them. We have plenty of videos out there involving used hardware, but I wanted to keep it new here for the sake uh, of the giveaway winner because I wanted that peace of mind. And if they have an issue, they can always reach back out to us and we'll do our best to make it right. Ooh, I almost forgot. We need to package this thing up. And you know I like my inflatable packs. Those are super cool. I love showing them on camera. One Instapack coming right up. You guys know the routine by this point. We're gonna unwrap it. We're gonna smash side A. We're gonna do a little wiggle like this and then we're gonna throw it in here and holy crap I forgot the left side panel oh it's off camera hold on one second one second for it mega inflates I'll just hold it like this and let it expand look at that look at that that's gonna take good care of the graphics card in there maybe I'll put another pack underneath the card just to make sure it doesn't wiggle down below uh, depending on where this is shipped it could see a lot of movement but uh yeah that's how we're gonna end it i think that's how i want to end all these giveaways just to show you guys how we package these those easy packs or insta packs whatever they're called are super cool now that's all for this one if you enjoyed it thumbs up consider subscribing and i will catch you in the next one my name is greg thanks for learning with me and best of luck in that giveaway